As you all know, I have uh, some wild-caught shamrock chameleons, and over there, of course, is Spearmint and Wintergreen. They are my uh, my studio pair, and uh, you've been getting to know them. Well, I have been doing a series of taming exercises on them, and I wanted to share what I do. Now, as uh, many of you know, uh, uh, I am not an advocate for handling chameleons. My whole thing about chameleons is leave them alone. But that doesn't mean we can't have some sort of interaction with them as long as they are full, willing participants in this interaction. And so any sort of taming that I do is getting them comfortable with interaction. And none of this is ever forced. And so I'm going to share with you what I do. Now, my taming programs have three steps to them. First of all, I want them to not be scared of my hand in their cage. So when I open the cage door and the hand goes in, I want them to feel comfortable. They don't have to say, oh, great, I want to go hang out with this person and climb on this hand. That's not what I'm talking about. But I want them to feel comfortable being in the vicinity of my hand. So while I'm doing things in their cage, they're not freaking out. That's the first step. The second step is I want them to be excited when my hand comes in their cage. You see the little bit of a difference there? And uh, so if we can get it to the point where they look forward to my hand coming into their cage, we've made a huge step. The third step in this whole program is I want them to request my hand to come into their cage. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, how are we going to do this? I'm going to show you exactly how I do those three stages of taming. And it's actually quite simple. It's offering food on your hand. And really, you do the same thing for each three steps. You just choose when to do it. So let's start with the first step, getting them comfortable with your hand in the cage. Every chameleon, when they come in, is going to have a different level of tolerance and uh, in interpretation of who you are. You are an animal that's bigger than them, therefore highly suspect to be something dangerous to them. Most chameleons will be scared, shy. They will do the defensive thing. They will try to run away. away! And that is to be expected. So we first have to set the stage for any sort of taming practice, and that is we need to give our chameleons a sense of security. There can be no taming. Taming means that they are okay with our presence. There can be no forced taming. If they are feeling vulnerable or they are feeling threatened, and the only way they can deal with feeling threatened is to freeze and then let you handle them, that's not being tamed. That is being forced and abducted. And while you're saying, oh, those words are a little bit uh, dramatic, don't you think, Bill? N no, not when the chameleon is feeling like he's scared for his life. This is serious to them. They don't know that you're not going to eat them. They think that you're going to eat them. Never in the millions of years of evolution have they ever had a concept of being a pet. Remember this, when you go and interact with your chameleon, nothing in their DNA says this is an okay interaction. They've just never had that before. And so we need to be understanding that we're presenting to them an interaction which does not compute. Now, it doesn't mean that they can't learn because they can. And we want to make sure we do that introduction to this new relationship thing in a way that doesn't do as much harm as it goes in the direction we want it to go. Anytime we force a chameleon to do something against their will, they will remember that and that will be credit against us. Coins will be taken out of our bank account every time we stress them out or do something against their will. And yes, giving medication is one of those things that's against their will. So yes, when you give medication, you will be uh, taking coins out of your bank account. Unfortunately, that is necessary. So the idea is you put more coins in the bank account and save up. So when you actually have to medicate, uh, you, your balance doesn't go to zero or negative immediately. Okay. So there can be recovery. So first step is give them security. What is security for a chameleon? That would be 
feeling like they can escape if they need to. And that means a large enough enclosure that they can move around. A small enclosure means they're trapped. Yes, it can give them a sense of security if they feel like nothing can get at them. But by definition, once you're in the cage, then you are in their space. And now instead of those solid walls being a protection from what's on the outside, now they are a trap from what's coming at them from the inside. So you've got to make sure that the cage is big enough that they can feel secure. The cage has to be set up so they can feel secure. That means lots of plants. You remember I'm doing this crazy quarantine thing where I'm using lots of live plants, this lush environment instead of the typical plastic plants that can be disinfected very easily. Well, I am taking the additional risk by using the live plants because I want the benefit of being able to calm them down and have them feel comfortable. Remember, that was my my decision, my balance that, that I chose, and I understand all of the risks. And so, once again, if you don't use live plants and you want to use plastic plants because they're disinfected, that's okay. You have decided that is you, the balance you have chosen. So I'm just presenting the way I have chosen to do it and explaining why. So I am able to do this taming exercise because I've given them a two by two by four foot tall cage and it's densely planted. Not, I mean, not densely, densely, densely enough. So that lays down the groundwork for a positive experience. Next, we go to step one, getting them comfortable with my hand in the cage. And for that, I am going to expect that every time I put my hand in the cage that they are going to react negatively. I want to make sure that I move slowly and smoothly and don't do any sort of jerking motion that a predator would do. I don't come from above. I want my hand always to be under them. Remember, chameleons get security from height. And so if you come from the top, it's kind of a predator type thing. If you come from below them, they're a little bit more calm. And so every time my hand comes in the cage, I, I check to see where are they, where, there they are. I make sure I come in from underneath so they feel secure. Now, every time I come in when I'm doing this uh, practice, I have a, a food item. And in the beginning, I always choose a food item that they don't normally get. In this case, I've been using silkworms. So they get roaches, superworms, and crickets as a staple. And then for the special training, they get silkworms. Uh, because they have responded to silkworms, they treat those as treats, they are healthy treats, and so that becomes the uh, taming tool. And so it's also timing. What I like to do is whenever I, I, I have a certain time that I feed them, and they get this feeder run cup that has all their bugs in it, I always go before that feeder run cup and do the taming. So they're hungry, they've had a day or two where they're not eating. Now, when we're doing quarantine like this, I feed them every day. I feed a little bit every day. And what I want to do is just get them eating and eating as much as possible. I will worry about three to five feeder insects every other day after I'm sure that they're well established. But every time I feed them, it's not just gobs of insects in there. I feed them maybe three to four feeder insects and I do that every day and I keep very close track as to what they eat. And I remove it at the end of the day to avoid anything somehow getting out. That way, when I come in the morning with the silkworm, they are somewhat hungry. Of course, they're not starved. This is an un unhealthy thing. This isn't a starvation thing. This is just a, I, I am hoping that this is an enjoyment thing. So uh, I bring in a silkworm and I see what their response is. At the beginning, those responses are usually they run away or they puff up defensive and that's okay. You just uh, leave your hand in there. You don't insist. Your hand just stays. Uh, luckily, they're chameleons, and so they can zap their tongue long distance, and so you don't have to get into their personal space to do this exercise. And so I'll just let the uh, silkworm crawl around in my hand for a minute or so, and if they don't want to eat it, that's fine. After a minute, or whenever I decide I'm done, I slowly take my hand out, and let them go on with their day. So uh, there's been an interaction and I actually get coins in my bank because the hand was there and there was nothing done to the chameleon. I did not take anything. I did not insist on holding him. I did not insist on making him get on my hand. 
So nothing was taken away. That's very important. The chameleon needs to know that my hand will come in and come out without taking anything. Once he's used to that, then he's going to start to think about, wait a minute, what is that thing crawling around in the hand? And that's when you start getting this chameleon eating it out of your hand. And so I do the thing where I put my hand in the cage. I let the, uh, the silkworm crawl around on my hand. And then once he eats it, I slowly take my hand out of the cage, close the cage door. Interaction is over with. It's been a positive experience for both of us. Now, this can go on and on and on until your chameleon is so comfortable with that hand coming in, them getting a silkworm, the hand going out, to the point where, then this is the second step, they look forward to your hand coming in the cage. And the, the amount of time that it takes from being scared to the hand to looking forward to the hand coming into the cage is different for every single chameleon. It's a personality thing. And so uh, some chameleons just go, boom, do it right away. I mean, <laughs> veiled chameleons tend to do that right away. Uh, or else they may be a shy chameleon and this may be a month and you just don't know. So go at your chameleon's pace. That is the key here. Go at your chameleon's pace. But sooner or later, that chameleon is going to start anticipating that your hand, every time your hand comes in, that there's something good for him. And this is what we're looking for for stage two. We want it so once your hand goes anywhere near the cage, they start going, you know, start looking, looking for the good thing to eat. That is anticipation and that is positive and that's what we're looking for. Make sure they get what they're looking for. So hand in, treat, hand out. We just keep doing that. Keep enforcing that your hand means good things. Now, you can keep this up for as long as, uh, as you want and you're welcome to stop there if that's, that's good enough for you. There is one next step that you uh, can take and, uh, and I'm taking with them. I am at step two with both of my shamrocks here. Step three is where they request you to uh, give them a treat. And the way I do this is that I have a branch or something that is up in the open, prominent, and whenever they are on that perch, I give them a silkworm. And so now I'm giving them the power to request a silkworm. And, and this is a, a tricky thing uh, because they have to make the connection between uh, coming out and being on this branch and getting a silkworm. Uh, so it may take longer for some than others. My male shamrock spearmint, I am suspecting is starting to get the idea because there's a, a branch and whenever he's on there, he gets a silkworm. And so uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. And so these are the different stages of taming that I am doing with my shamrock chameleons right here, right now. And I'll let you know how it goes. Both of them took a little while to warm up to my hand, but once they warmed up to my hand, they were quite enthusiastic and very rarely do they not take it from my hands now. Uh, so both uh, wintergreen and spearmint, wintergreen is the female shamrock chameleon and spearmint, spearmint is the male. Both of them will take uh, anything from my hand now. So I, I talked about using silkworms as a treat. After a while, I start mixing it up and giving them other things, dubia, cricket, uh, to the point where, yes, they will get treats. And I try to make it something special, like a freshly molted dubia, freshly molted uh, super worm, just something a little bit different. So they're curious and they're wondering what is next in that hand. And this is the building of a positive relationship with your chameleon. Now, some people watching this will be saying, hey, wait a minute. I expected taming a chameleon to mean it's sitting on my shoulder and me going to the grocery store. No, uh, I am sorry to disappoint you. And, and I mean that literally, I, I am sorry because I would love for chameleons to do that. I would love for my chameleon to sit on my shoulder, but unfortunately that becomes a very stressful situation. That's just not what a chameleon is. I know you've seen it on social media and I know you've seen people say they love this. Most of the time, that's not 
the case. That's most of the time that is the keeper projecting their desires upon the poor chameleon that has to take it. And that chameleon is stressed and that stress eventually will take a toll. There are a very small number of chameleons that actually seem to have no problem interacting. And those, those exist. And if you get one of those and you're living with one of those, uh, enjoy it to its fullest. They are rare. Uh, the problem is most people who think they have one of those don't. And so they're tormenting their chameleon, thinking that their chameleon loves them. So it's kind of a mess situation. But... None of my interaction is with them uh, on my hand. You can go in that direction. And the way you do that is now with your hand, uh, instead of being like 12 inches, 6 to 12 inches away for them to zap with their tongue, now your hand, you can put it in front of them. Not blocking them, but just in front of them and see if they're going to step onto your hand. Most chameleons aren't going to be up for this, but... Once again, as long as you are not taking and you are allowing them to, uh, to do it on their own, you know, go ahead, you can try it. The thing is, and the reason why I don't like doing this is because once they're on your hand, they lose total control. So once they're on your hand and you're bringing them around, at no point are you able to get feedback as to when they are stressed. They can only give you that feedback when they have a choice as to whether they're going to be with you or they're going to run away. And if they're on your hand, the only choice they have is uh, e either sit there and, and freeze or else jump off. And yes, some chameleons will jump off if they've gotten to that point. Most chameleons will freeze. So the problem with handling and trying to tame, do taming exercises with handling is you have uh, totally removed the feedback that your chameleon can give you unless they want to do something dramatic. And a lot of chameleons don't want to do something dramatic. They just freeze. That's that's just what chameleons do. And so you're, you're getting into dangerous waters when you start uh, putting your personal interpretation into what they are doing or not doing. Because usually people are wrong about what's going on in the chameleon's mind. Anyway, that's what's going on as far as the, quote, taming of the shamrocks. And they're doing great. They're eating. They're pooping. The poop is looking good. Yeah, there's a little bit of the uh, protozoa, but um, uh, I'm working on whether to manage it. Very light load. So uh, I'll probably leave it for now. And maybe next week I'll put them in visual range and see if there's any sort of uh, interaction between them. And if there is, you know, I will report it to you. So it's time to get on with the day. I, of course, am dressed appropriately. <laughs> Thank you, Eliza, Ann, Mikey, James. Uh, who else was involved in this? Sean, I think. I I'm still a little bit hazy as to who all was involved in getting this shirt to me. Uh, so I may not have all the names, but thank you all. Uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> thank you to the community that makes this so much fun to do. And uh, so I'm going to get to it and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.